I was with my husband for over 20 years, and I grew the courage to finally leave him. I'll get into that, but just know, when someone just seems so perfect, they probably have flaws that they're hiding from you. And that's what I found out about my husband, because it turns out he's a liar, he's a cheater, he's manipulative, and this whole time I thought he was perfect. You won't believe this story. I've just found out that the love of my life is a liar, and I don't know what to do. I'm sitting here waiting for him to realize that I know the truth. Once he knows, there's no turning back. All that we have is going to be decimated. I mean, 20 years of marriage is going to be going down the drain. That is, unless I forgive him, but the chances of that happening are low, considering the disgusting things that I found out. I don't have any friends to ask for advice, so I've decided to ask you guys. Hopefully, your insights will help me to make an informed decision. If I trust my own emotions, I don't think that I'll make the right choice. Unfortunately, I love him too much to do what is best for myself. How can I not when he's all I've ever known? Frank and I started dating when we were 15 years of age. Now I'm 39 and he's 39. We got married as soon as we turned 18 and I did not study further. He decided to get a college degree and has since been the breadwinner. When we went off to college, I stayed with his parents while he visited on weekends. I found out that I was pregnant three months into the marriage and was overjoyed. I could not stop fantasizing about us having our own little family. Unfortunately, it was just a dream because I lost my baby. That miscarriage was the first of many. We tried to have kids for many moons, but simply could not. Eventually, we stopped trying due to the strain of my body, and we were told that if we kept trying, it would, it would actually end in the exact same way. Due to my failure to have kids, his family resented me. His mother wanted him to get another wife, but he simply refused, stating he loved me. He told me that he loved me and wanted no one else on this earth because I was enough for him. This enraged his mother and strengthened her dislike for me, but you know what? I simply did not even care. I was head over heels in love with him and would do anything. Little did I know that I was just a fool. The way I actually found out is quite comedic. So about a year ago, my husband suffered from a brain hemorrhage. This was a couple of weeks after I graduated because I've been taking some health courses so that I could use, also have something to do. You know, staying at home was affecting my mental health. And um, after the miscarriages, I decided to go back to school. I studied for a good four years before graduating, and Frank was so supportive of me throughout the entire time I was studying. He even supported me throughout my first few weeks at my job. I was very happy for his support and glad that I could finally contribute something to the family. I remember that I uh, bought him an expensive set of cufflinks with my first salary. The look in his eyes when he saw my gift was the most precious. It was the first time I'd bought him anything with my own money and I felt so dang proud. I started to dream about all the things that we could achieve now that both of us were working. I wanted us to build something just for the two of us since we could not have children. Adoption, yes, that had been an option, but he didn't like the idea of having kids that were not his own. Because of this, I settled into the knowledge that I would never have children. Shortly after I started my first job, he, he had a brain hemorrhage right then and there. When I got to the hospital after he collapsed, he was in critical states. The doctors were honest with us and told us that he might not survive. They thought it was better to just let him go, otherwise he was going to be stuck in a vegetative state. To my surprise, his parents were willing to let him go. They say that they did not want him to suffer anymore. I did not think that was the best option, and the thought of being apart from him killed me. I felt my entire soul cracking in half, and I knew that I had to do something to save him. With that established, I decided that he was going to receive treatment. I had faith in the doctors to fix him and bring him back to me. I was told that there was a low chance of him surviving, but I was stubborn. I fought everyone who stood in my way, and I won. As his wife, I was the only one allowed to make a medical choice about him. Due to that, his parents failed in overruling my choice, and the operation commenced. After the operation, he did not have movement in most of his body, but there was brain function. He just needed to have a lot of physiotherapy in order to have a potential full recovery. I knew and understood what was required of me, and I did not even complain, not once. I, I nursed him back to health over the past year. I was there when he first learned how to walk, talk, and everything else in between. 
It's because of me that he's here right now. You would think that he would be grateful that I saved his life and that I love him so much, but turns out it meant nothing. He's been cheating on me for quite a while now, and I have absolutely no idea how long. I found out tonight after he fell asleep, and I had some extra work to complete, so I was still awake. I heard his phone complaining uh, of a low battery. Beep, beep. So I took it and plugged it in. As I did so, uh, a text, it caught my eye. It was actually from a woman calling him Babe. Immediately, I went back to him on the bed and got his fingerprint, just like that. I then opened the phone and discovered horror. Everything happened so quickly and intuitively that I did not even question it. I just knew that I had to find out the truth at the moment. Despite the fact that I've never looked through his phone that day, it felt like uh, the perfect time. I guess that was the day that I was destined to find out the truth. I found various text messages between him and another woman. There were texts where he planned to meet up with these women while also reminiscing about past rendezvous. I also found pictures of these women in various states. I felt sick to my belly as I went through his phone. I wondered how he even pulled this off. I mean, the fact that he found time to have a committed relationship with all these women shocked me. It made sense because he was no longer working now since I was the able-bodied one. I've been okay with becoming the breadwinner due to him taking care of me for many moons. But this was ridiculous. Reading about how he called me stupid for not discovering anything just shattered me. He made me feel like a fool and it hurt like hell and I was consumed by my anger. In the moment of anger, I did something impulsive. I added all of their numbers onto a group chat and then I sent a message telling them that I was his wife. I then said I made a group chat so that we could all introduce ourselves. Afterwards, I put his phone on silent and then put it on the charger. He's going to wake up to the pandemonium tomorrow. I wonder what explanation he's going to give me that will justify disrespecting our marriage like that. More than 25 years of knowing each other and this is how I'm treated? It has to be a joke. I've been nothing but dedicated and loving towards him and I've sacrificed so much for him. Everything has been about him since I was 15 years of age and this is what I get? I'm so stupid for not even seeing anything all these years. I was blindly living in bliss while he was betraying me. Now, all I feel is numbness, and I don't know what to do. Do I forgive him since he's all I've ever known for 20 plus years, or do I leave him? I've never been a believer in divorce. I've always thought that I had the perfect husband and would be happy together for many years to come. Being apart from him has never really been an option, but now it seems inevitable. I mean, yeah, while I love him, I fear that this love will consume me. What if he never stops cheating on me? I don't think that I have the heart to go through multiple heartbreaks, and I'm going to be one of those women whose husbands cheat on them while they know and suffer through it. I have a choice to make about what I want for my future, and I've never been so certain about my future before. But now everything has been upheaved, and I find myself at a crossroads. Please help me. What do you think that I should do? What's up everybody, Mr. Reddito here. Our first update is two months later. And guys, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click subscribe just in case you like these sort of stories because I drop one every single day. Here is update number one, two months later. Hey guys, thank you so much for your comments. I feel a wide range of emotions reading it. I cried, I raged, I laughed at myself, you name it. I did all of this while he was knocked out from his pain pills, none the wiser. It's been two months since my last post, and this is how everything went the next morning. I did not sleep that night. Instead, I got ready for the day and made him breakfast, and woke him up. He was acting normal the whole time since he had not seen the hell I unleashed on his phone. I waited patiently for his reaction, and soon enough, he realized what went down. Luckily, I was sitting across from him, and his face turned pale with shock. He slowly put his phone down and then asked what have I done. I smiled meekly and asked, Oh, what are you talking about, hubby? His indignation quickly turned into fear as my smile widened. I asked if he had anything to tell me or if I should ask Monica Emily Janice. He swore at that very moment and then told me that he could explain. In response, I informed him how I knew everything. I needed, uh, well, he was welcome to elaborate, though. He had a long-winded explanation, of course, but luckily you don't have to hear it since I'm going to summarize it. He told me that firstly, despite everything I saw, he really loved me. He claimed that the, well, he was doing with all these women was separate from our marriage. 
In response to that, I asked why did he do it. He then gave me the runaround, telling me that I was perfect in every sense of the possible way, and at that point I was close to reaching across the table and yanking him. Frank then said that he started cheating two years into the marriage, because he wanted a bit more. Since we got married so quickly, he felt as if he had not quite lived yet, and he slightly resented me for it. I told this guy that even if I understood his explanation, was he still craving more for 20 plus years? He was still actively cheating because clearly whatever was in his system could not be erased. That was when the tears came out. He sobbed and said that he did stop for a while, but he still went back. He feared that it was an addiction and sickness that he could never be cured of. It took a while for me to digest this information. He said that he had a sickness and I did promise him with, uh, well, sick and health when we got married. I had fought for his survival and all lost hope and maybe this was just the time he got sick. The more he spoke, the more I thought about just forgiving him. But then a text that he had sent to one of the girls suddenly appeared in my head. He uh, said, You have the most perfect smile and uh, I, I get lost. He said that to me in our wedding vows, and he has said it many, many times afterwards. It was our thing that we did not share with anyone. I wondered what other girls and other things we shared and he gave to these women. Those were parts of me and my heart that he gave away so easily. With that, I told him that I did not think that I could nurse him back to health um, this time around. And then I left for work. For the rest of the week, I did everything for him but did not interact with him at all. In my free time, I spoke to my lawyer about divorce. I was not sure if I was going to leave, but I sure as heck did not want to be around him. In the end, I went and told his parents what he did and left them there. I told them that I needed time to work through this before I could make a choice. I could not be around him uh, while in the state I was because I feared what I would do to him. Over the past two months of our separation, I've been processing everything and trust me, there is a lot to go through. I'm questioning everything about our marriage and lamenting over the time I've wasted. This is what I get for making him the center of my world. Betrayed and used. Even then, I'm still so weak and in love. I feel pain being separated from him, but so much anger. I don't even know how to process this. I would appreciate any tips. Update number two. A lot has happened in these last ten months. I thought that by now I would be officially divorced, but that's not the case. I'm still having issues with my husband because he refuses to sign the divorce papers. I'm hoping for an uncontested divorce at this point, but we'll see. What happened uh, was that we decided to separate and try to have counseling. You know, during counseling, I realized that I could never love him again, so I asked him for a divorce. This put both of our families in an uproar, and everyone tried to convince me to not leave him. The only person who supported my choice was my mother. My mom was my rock throughout all this and supported me a lot. I spent a lot of time with her, which was how I met Harry. Harry was her old friend's son. When I met Harry, he expressed an interest in me, but I shut him down and told him my situation. He was respectful of this and offered to be a friend. I've not had any close friends in years. Therefore, his presence was welcome. When Frank's family was harassing me to drive him to appointments and to buy his medication, I was under so much pressure. Despite saying no multiple times, they invaded my space and harassed me. Harry was there for me through all that and something miraculous happened. My heart started to fade each day and it was replaced by optimism. Somehow he had made me happy enough to start healing. With that healing came feelings for him and it became obvious between us that we had feelings for each other, but we didn't want to uh, cheat. Due to this, I presented Frank with divorce papers and told him, It's over. Frank refused to sign the papers and gave me the runaround for a few months, but in the end, I decided to pursue a relationship with Harry, and Harry and I have now been together for six months, and I just found out I'm two months pregnant. It came as a shock, considering the fact that I've not been pregnant in years. I'm hopeful that this one will be different, but it's still early on. The only people that know are his mom and my mom. Unfortunately, one of them must have blabbed because now Frank knows as well and is seriously not happy. I've been having a back and forth argument with him on the phone since he found out and he's calling me an immoral woman for apparently cheating on him while we were married. 
Imagine the pot calling the kettle. Ah, such hypocrisy. He's never been loyal to me, yet he wants to lecture me about it. Why does he not just set me free so I can be with the person who truly loves me? All I want is to focus on my relationship with Harry and the baby on the way. I don't want Frank's negativity in the way. Harry has expressed to me that he wants to talk to Frank man to man, but I'm unsure if it's a good idea. Harry hates Frank's guts. And I simply fear that he'll lose control. Frank is looking for anything to use against me, and this could be it. A part of me wants Harry to tell Frank to back off. Maybe he'll listen. I have no idea at this point. Update number three. Hey guys, sorry for dropping off the face of the earth for the past five months. I'm currently in the hospital right now, awaiting news on whether I need life-saving surgery or not. I know, it's random. You must be wondering how things got so sudden, uh, but worry not, I can fill you in on while I wait. Are you ready? Here it goes. So turns out that my pregnancy was the much-needed catalyst for my ex to finally agree to a divorce. I didn't even have to wait those six months for an automatic divorce. He filed for divorce and had me served while I was at work. He has a flair for the dramatics. Shortly after filing for divorce, he decides to spread rumors about me cheating on him. I'm literally scoffing at the thought of it. When I found out that he was sleeping with half the state, I never tarnished his reputation. All I did was rant about it on the internet after changing his name and not giving out his information. I endured the gossip, stares, and speculation the people who needed to know, his many girlfriends, knew. And that was enough. Of course, that meant nothing to the hypocrite who basically led a witch hunt against me. However, even if it came to the loss of my reputation, at least I got my freedom. Unfortunately, my joy was very short-lived. When I say that man put me through hell during these divorce uh, proceedings, don't believe me? <laughs> well, it was worse. Since he had known me for 20 plus years, he spilled everything he knew. One of those things was the depressive episode I had after my miscarriage that led me to being put into the institution. He claimed that because of the toll of worrying about me, he started cheating. You can imagine my shock when this new information was presented to me. He was a calculating devil, something I never had to be at the end of, and I was cracking. Harry, who had been supportive throughout the whole situation, did his best, and I was stressed. I could not eat or sleep, and Frank wanted to go for all I had amassed for four years in spousal support. If I had to take care of that liar, I would lose it. It was not fair, all these thoughts came to my mind and stressed me. Each time I went to the doctor, I just was warned that I was too stressed and it would affect the baby. I tried everything and anything, but nothing helped. Eventually, Harry had enough and he visited my ex for the talk that he wanted to have with him. Frank eased up after the talk and I have no idea what Harry said, but it appears to work or so I thought. Guys, exactly two nights ago, Frank visited me while Harry was at work and he absolutely came out of nowhere when I was in the kitchen and guys, he actually threatened me. Yeah, looked me right in the eyes. Well, he warned me to tell Harry to stay away because he knew nothing. He called me the biggest mistake of his life and said that he wanted years with me when he could have had a younger, fertile woman. At that moment, I pressed the video record button and discreetly propped up my phone. I needed him to say more damning things so that he would not get alimony in the proceedings. You know, after pressing that record button and discreetly propped up my phone, ah, you wouldn't believe it. I then asked him if he had any kids with these women. His eyes literally turned red with anger and he told me not to disrespect him. I then told him to leave before Harry came back and at that moment he called me leftovers and then approached me. I told him to stand back, but he did not. Instead, he moved closer to me and called me dirty. I told him to go to hell, and then everything just went entirely black. You know, the rest of the video I recorded, it showed that he headbutted me and I fell over and then he ran away. Harry got home ten minutes later to see me on the floor. I was rushed to the hospital and critical. When I came to, I told Harry about the video and he submitted it to the police and soon they'll make an arrest. As for now, I'm waiting for them to complete tests so they induced me. They're worried that the trauma from the incident might have caused the miscarriage again. Guys, I'm begging you to please just keep me in your prayers and thoughts tonight. Update number four. This is the final update of the story. Hello again, guys. It's been two whole months, but here I am. 
I can't begin to express to you guys how thankful I am for your support. Reading your comments helped me to keep my head up even when I doubted myself. I found that I possessed a hidden strength thanks to you guys reminding me of my worth. You know, because of that, I'm pleased to tell you that my life has significantly improved since my previous update. Firstly, I had a C-section a couple of hours after updating you. It was a very close call since both myself and the baby were in critical, but by some miracle we both survived. I can't describe to you the euphoria I felt holding my daughter in my arms for the first time. All my pain just vanished and I saw an entire world in her eyes. It gave me goosebumps to even think about the immense warmth that radiated from her. As soon as she came into my life, everything was set okay. I was informed that while I was in the hospital, my ex was charged with attempted murder. He was jailed for several days before he made bail, but his troubles were far from over. Shortly after this, the judge came to a verdict on the divorce. Taking into account the recent evidence as well as the presented testimony, the divorce was finalized. Instead of me being the one to pay him, he was the one who owes me. Unfortunately, he did not have money. He claimed that he needed to use his savings to take care of his bills and future medical treatment. He must have thought that was going to get him out of paying alimony, but boy, was he wrong. In order to compensate me for the pain and trauma he caused me, he had to sign over our home. Obviously, he was not happy about this and tried to protest, but to no avail. The judge's decision was final, and he had to give me the house. That was not all. He also had to deal with the consequences of causing me to give labor prematurely. Firstly, the law dealt with him. He was given a five-year suspended sentence due to his condition and being a first-time offender. However, if he commits any crime during that period, he's going straight to jail. He also had to pay my medical bills, but since he was broke, his parents paid for it. I was glad that they also got a taste of their medicine after how they treated me when I simply could not have children. His mom, oh boy, was she the worst of all. Always calling me worthless since I've uh, never had a child. Now look, I have a beautiful baby girl and her son does not have a child despite cheating for so many years? Guess I get to have the last laugh. In addition to that, Frank's reputation is absolutely tarnished. When people found out what he did, they suddenly switched sides. All his supporters bashed him and cut ties with him, which was an added bonus. After that, I blocked him, obviously, on everything and everywhere and got rid of any trace of him. Afterwards, I focused my mind on Harry and our daughter and have been doing so ever since. Life has been busy because of the baby, but it's a good kind of busy. I don't mind sleepless nights because my heart is content. I no longer feel pain or anything. All I feel is peace and happiness.